hello, and welcome to the show. It's me, John Park, and it is time for JP's product pick of the week. And I want to tell you, these are going like hotcakes today. We just uh, released an allocation we had set aside for the show. And uh, I can tell from the chat and also looking uh, at the page itself that they are moving quick. So if you want to jump on this quick, head to that QR code or this URL right here. You can still watch this show from inside the product page, uh, but they are going quick. So head on over there if you're here to tune into the show because we have a 50% off on this week's product pick. Uh, and it's a, it's a super cool one. Before I tell you about it, I'm going to have Lady Ada jump back in time just a little bit to tell us about this week's product. Take it away, Lady Ada. The new ESP32 S2 reverse TFT feather. So this is a lot like our ESP32 TFT feather, except you'll notice that it's the TFT is on the back of the board, not the front of the oh. board. It's so reverse. But this also means there's a little bit more space, right? Because I'm not sharing it with the USB and the whatever. And so um, on the back, you've got the ESP32 S2, you've got a stomach UT port. And on the front, we've got the TFT. It's a 240 by 135 pixel RGB TFT with IPS. So it's a very beautiful little display. You communicate with it over SPI. You've got the reset button and three IO buttons. And the D0 button is also the bootloader button. So if you ever need to enter the bootloader manually, um, it's also available. So you've got on the left, the USB-C, you've got another reset button in case you need another reset button. I always like to keep it there. Yeah. Battery charging. Um, oh, something new is uh, I've updated these feathers. We used to use the LC709203 as a battery monitoring chip. We've moved to the Max 17048. Um, shouldn't really matter too much for you. It's just, it's a very nice ultra low power battery monitor. Um, go back here. I don't remember. There's a NeoPixel on board. There's a second regulator. So you can turn off power to the NeoPixel and the STEM QT port for ultra low power. We're using the RT9080 regulator on these boards, which means that the power goes down to like 30 or 40 microamperes when in deep sleep mode. ESP32 S2 module, this mini module has four megabytes of flash, two megabytes of PSRAM. It's great for Arduino, CircuitPython use. Uh, that PSRAM makes it excellent for IoT projects because you can buffer your gigantic JSON data. Uh, like I mentioned, there's a Max 17048 battery monitor it's ultra low power but you just get really good battery monitoring on it um it'll tell you the percentage and voltage of your lipo battery when in use uh you got these nice big buttons in these days uh the new penguin font so nice legible um sans serif font uh secondary regulator for the stem qt port so you can have sensors and then depower them for ultra low power usage uh this is the main regulator battery recharging um, JST PH4 uh, battery uh, for portable projects, uh, USB-C, and then as uh, we've mentioned, this beautiful um, front screen and uh, three buttons. Let me see if the... Okay, so this is the demo. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so if I have I2C devices, the, the I2C 36, that's the built-in monitor, uh, reset button, and then um, the buttons D0, D1, and D2. What's that spot for a chip? Yeah, there is a chip QT vertical yeah there's a uh there's a, it's a vertical stomach qt yeah because there's no other way to have it but this is also good because it means anything yeah. comes out the, yeah. the back um this is for a bme 280 but uh we don't actually uh, place it on there it's just sort of a, a, a vestigial uh sensor okay um one thing just to note for the sensors is the d0 button when you press it it shorts to ground the d1 and d2 purposefully short to 3.3 volts so the reason is is we learn this with the mag tag um for the lowest power deep sleep interrupt wake-ups um you want to have the power switch connect to power not ground um and this uh does a better job of um uh allowing you to have multiple buttons trigger different uh wake-ups like if you want to have multiple gpio trigger wake-ups so um that's why they're if you're like why is d1 and d2 different that's why they are um and yeah we'll also do an s3 version but i wanted to get this into the shop to start but i think this would be great for panel mounting Good. or a case you know yes the battery sticks out a little bit but you can kind of fold yeah. this under and it's slim and you can still use um feather wings you just stack them on top this way right it's it's stacked backwards so if you want to add 
ethernet or whatever go for it all the tft control signals don't go through um the gpio just the spi so you have all these pins available uh yeah that's right we uh we've got the product pick of the week this week right here let me jump to the down shooter there you can see it in all of its glory that beautiful beautiful screen there uh, and I'm going to keep this one plugged in just because it looks so good. This is my product pick of the week this week. It is the ESP32 S2 Reverse TFT Feather. Uh, unfortunately, we have sold out already. Uh, I mean, fortunately or unfortunately. Unfortunately, if you wanted to get one, but fortunately because it means uh, we've, we've sold a bunch of these and, and they're out there in the world, which is good for everybody. Um, but they are, I'm going to go ahead and unplug this one now. Uh, they are, I think, a really great revision to the uh, the existing ESP32 S2 with TFT, which was on the top side of it. And that is uh, largely because of how much easier it is to mount these into panels and enclosures. Um, so first of all, let's talk about uh, what this guy has got a little bit. Um, some of this is a recap from what Lady was saying, but the things Things I want to make sure that we mention. Um, this is the 240 megahertz Tensilica processor on here. We've got four megs of uh, flash. We've got two megs of PS RAM. This can do Wi-Fi, no Bluetooth, but this can do Wi-Fi, uh, 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi. Uh, it has the native USB. It has a USB-C on it, which I love. It has a Stemma QT port for hooking up all your uh, I2C devices. And you can see that that's actually one of the little vertical uh, ports. Sometimes we use the horizontal ones as one of the vertical ones, which is, again, kind of nice if you're doing this uh, sort of panel mounted to have, have that plug in from the top there. It uh, still has all the usual battle, battery charging. Uh, you, can, you can charge a LiPo off of the circuit that's on there. Uh, this has these, let me, let, me jump to, uh, let me jump back to the down view actually for a second to look at some of these great features on here. Uh, so you can see here we have grab something to point with. We have uh, these three user buttons here, and they're labeled uh, D0, D1, and D2. Uh, D0 is also the boot button, uh, so you can, if you need to do a boot select uh, and reset to change the bootloader, you can use it for that. Otherwise, once the uh, code is up and running, that can act as a regular uh, user button. You just have to know that that one is going to be uh, reverse of these other two as far as um, the pull uh, direction, but you can use debouncer to, to fix that actually. It's one thing that uh, is nice. So they, they'll all essentially say uh, true when you press them or false when you press them. It flips the value. Uh, there's a reset button on the top. There's also a reset button on the bottom. So you have uh, double the options there. And that's really convenient again, because if you're mounting this in a panel, which I'll show you in a second, uh, a little panel mount I made for one, it's really nice to have some user buttons here and the reset in case you need to, for whatever reason, uh, you've frozen up the board or whatever, you need to reset it. Uh, if you've maybe got a USB connection to it internally and you need to reset the board for that, it's all right there on the, on the uh, what, what effectively becomes the top. It's really the bottom of the feather, but this effectively becomes the top or the front of the thing. Uh, let's see, what else? Uh, so this is great for both Arduino and CircuitPython. This demo here, uh, this is the one that it ships with. Let me start that up. Uh, let's flip this way. Um, oh, and here's the thing I forgot to mention, of course, really obvious, is the 1.14 inch 240 by 135 pixel IPS TFT display. Uh, it looks great from angles as well, being an IPS display. It doesn't just like disappear. You can get, get nice oblique angles there and still see it. Uh, this one right now is on this demo uh, giving us any, if you have a battery, I don't think I have one here to plug in, it'll give you battery um, uh, monitoring that you can see on one line there. Uh, it'll tell you the I squared C address of anything plugged in. And then also we have uh, these buttons are responding. So when I press D0, D1, D2, that's just letting us know that those are, uh, those are plugged in and being pressed. Uh, so let me show you, uh, I think one of the nicest features of it is this panel mount um, option that you've got. So if you're mounting this in enclosures or if you're mounting this in panels, uh, it works really well. I've got uh, a little acrylic panel that I made. Uh, I just cut this uh, well, I, I designed it for this um, purpose to the specification of a Eurorack 
um, case, which is what I have it plugged into here. And you can see there's the four little mounting holes. Uh, just because of space constraints, by the way, we've got M2 and M2.5. I just used M2 all the way around, but just know that uh, these are really tiny holes down here just so they don't uh, get in the way of the, um, the actual package, the chip package there. Uh, so I've mounted it into a little uh, case that I made. I, I cut this uh, out of acrylic on a laser cutter. Um, and it gives me a, a kind of a neat little way to very quickly add uh, an ESP32S2 feather to a Eurorack project and mount it all, all in one. Uh, this program I have here running is just kind of a fake. It's just doing a little bit of uh, dancing graphics. And then if I hold uh, one of the user buttons, it flips the color um, of the, uh, the bar that's above that one. So you can play around with it like that. Um, I can get in a close up there and you can see how nice and sharp this screen is. Let me focus that. There we go. That's about as, as sharp as I can get it on this camera. Uh, but really nice looking screen. Again, like I said, it's, uh, it works well from angles. And if I pull this apart, you can see, I'll fix the focus yet again. I'll show you how this is mounted in here. So I'll go ahead and turn that off. And you can see this is just running off of the case power since we've got a USB pin that'll accept five volt and one of the rails on a Eurorack power supply is five volts. That works well. Um, here you can see it's, uh, it's just sort of a temporary solution here and the, the jacks aren't connected up to anything. This is just sort of a proof of concept. Um, but you can see there, it just mounts neatly and easily inside of the panel. Um, you could, of course, plug in USB uh, cable there, maybe make a solution to powering that and programming it from outside of the case if you wanted to. Uh, but the way I have this set up right now, it just is, is sort of integrated into uh, the power, the 5 volt that goes into the, into the uh, USB pin there. Close that back up. So... Uh, let's see, any, let me see if we've got uh, any questions over in the chat. There's our Discord there. Let me switch this out here. If you're looking for the chat, by the way, if you're ever in Facebook, um, you can head on over to the uh, adafru.it slash Discord. Uh, look for the live broadcast chat channel. Uh, and also we've got the YouTube uh, chat up. So let's see. Uh, yeah, Keith... Schlothauer asks, what's the width from pinhole to pinhole? Uh, Tackle the World says, check the downloads page of the primary guide, and that'll give you the, um, the specifications there. Um, we have uh, the production files available for download. You can go to the GitHub and, and grab all of those, uh, those files if you need to. These are um, standardized on the feather, so for the most part, if you've come up with a, a design that'll work on one feather, it'll work on most of them. Uh, let's see, and yeah, and so, so by the way, so we sold out of those at the, uh, at the discounted price during the show. We will have more of these in stock, I think, pretty soon. There's not a huge constraint on that chip on ESP32 S2, so we're able to get them and make them, but, uh, the runs are typically in, in batches of 100, so that was, I think, one whole work order, uh, that got stashed and, and, uh, put up for the show. Uh, let's see, other questions, uh, DJ Devon 3 some modules have really small mounting holes, um, let's see, which one are you talking about, yeah, this one, is, I think these are M25 at the top and M2 at the bottom, uh, just because of the, the size of the ESP32 package there. Uh, all right, so let's see, what else do I wanted to show here is, if we head on over to the learn guide here. Oops, one second. Bring that up. Uh, there is a um, description of the board. If you head to pinouts, you can see uh, the nice, uh, nice job Katney did on doing both a front and reverse pinout, which is really, really, uh, we really appreciate that, Katney. Uh, since this is the kind of board you may have flipped upside down a lot and still want to know what the pins are, she actually. Um, figured out a way to convert our, our uh, semi-automated pinout diagram pretty pins into a uh, sort of mirrored version of it. So we have those 
up there. That's really nice, really helpful. Uh, and then this will tell you what all the, uh, the different options are for powering, uh, all the pins, TFD display, how that's connected through SPI, uh, the Wi-Fi module, battery monitoring. Uh, there is not a BMA280. I think you can attach one if you want to. Uh, I'm not sure if that's going away on these. The, the pinout is there, the pads are there, but the chip is not on there. Um, and there's a guide in here on how to set it up for Arduino, how to set it up for CircuitPython. Uh, there's also info on power management. And then, again, going back to that question about uh, the... Uh, specifications on pins. If you head to the last page in the guide, this is true for most of the board guides uh, and, and sensor guides, you will find uh, the data sheets for chips that are on there. Here's the PCB file in EagleCAD. There's a 3D model uh, on GitHub. And these, I actually really love these because uh, the Ruiz brothers make these from the Eagle file, so they're accurate to the PCB. Uh, they're uh, usually put in step and a couple other formats. Step is a really nice format for me using Rhino. So I can bring this in uh, when I made this panel. I just brought in that 3D model from our uh, the CAD file GitHub, duplicated some of the uh, curves and, and chamfered them and filleted them a bit and uh, duplicated the holes that were already in the, in the 3D file for uh, mounting and it all just worked. I didn't have to double check the, the measurements or anything like that. Often I don't trust a 3D file out there in the wild. These I trust. I know they're, uh, they're built well and they're built from the, uh, the CAD file. Uh, and uh, yeah, and then you can also get the um, schematic. You can get the fritzing object if you're doing some work in fritzing with this as well as all of the different pretty pins uh, diagrams for, for this. So you could print one out real big if you're using one of these boards a lot and wanted to have a, a reference next to you. Um, all right, so let's see. I think that's probably going to do it. Let me see if we've uh, covered everything. Um, again, my uh, apologies if you wanted to get one on the discount and they sold out really quickly today. Uh, these will be back in stock, not with the discount, but you can usually also find a 10% off uh, during one of the shows. One of the live streams is usually a, a coupon you can get uh, to at least get a little bit, bit of savings on there. So let's see. I think that's going to do it. Let me set this up for hanging on my pegboard there with a little wire hanger. That right there is my product pick of the week this week. It is the ESP32-S2 Reverse TFT Feather. Thanks, everybody, for stopping by. For Adafruit Industries, I'm John Park, and this has been JP's Product Pick of the Week. I will see you next time. Bye-bye.